With us, our finance minister and deputy prime minister, Christian Freeland, uh, and thank you very much for being with us, minister. Um, I, and I want to start right there with this notion of the spending, because you allude to it in your fiscal update. The language seems to me to be important, uh, you, you know, smart, uh, targeted. These are words that suggest you want to make very careful, kind of incisive spending on the government's part to get the economy going. What might that look like? Can you give us any detail? Um, well, it's great to be with you, Amanda. And I want to thank you, first of all, for really zeroing in on the preloaded stimulus idea. None of us have a crystal ball, um, but economists uh, like Ben, like Doug, have been pointing out that some Canadian households, and it tends to be the better off households, do have quite a lot of money that they've saved because there hasn't been that much to do in the pandemic. And certainly it would be great if that money could go towards driving our recovery. And I wanna make an offer now to all of your listeners. If people have ideas on how the government can act to help unlock that preloaded stimulus, I am very, very interested. Maybe as Doug Porter was suggesting, it happens by itself. That's the best case scenario for me. But if people have ideas on how we can really, you know, try to unleash that and particularly unleash it in the parts of the Canadian economy that really need support, tourism, hospitality, domestic services, uh, let me know. And we, uh, it's, well, you may well hear from people, Minister. Um, it, it just in terms of uh, the update, it's a pretty clear snapshot of where things are. Um, we know the spending has been high. The deficit is enormous, uh, and it will continue to be enormous for many, many years, even as it comes down. How can you reassure Canadians that we will get this under control, that we're not entering a new era uh, where we're creating systemic holes, um, budgetary problems that will last? In other words, where temporary spending becomes permanent. Um, well, by doing exactly what you just said, Amanda, um, we were very clear in the fall economic statement, and I am going to be very clear in my stewardship of the economy, that there is a big difference between the temporary one-off spending we need to get through the coronavirus and to get through and, you know, to minimize the scarring that we experience as we fight COVID. And then the temporary spending we need to do to get out of the coronavirus recession. That is in one category, and that is entirely different from permanent built-in structural spending. We are going to be very disciplined about that, and we need to be disciplined about that. We do have, obviously, um, you know, enormous need right now. You just increased the, the business loans, um, sort of reintroduce them uh, for those that need it. How much have you factored in how bad this winter could be? In other words, the spending you've announced, I know you've set up to $27 billion this year to about $30 billion next year. Will that be enough, Minister, to get us through to a vaccine? You know, I don't have a crystal ball. None of us do. And I think the one thing that has been consistent about economists' forecasts about the economic impact of coronavirus is they've been consistently wrong. I think people underestimated the initial impact of the coronavirus on the economy. Then they underestimated how strong the recovery would be in the summer. And I think people have underestimated what the impact of the second wave of the virus would be. So I think we all need to be very humble and be very aware of the fact that there is huge uncertainty out there. Having said that, what we have tried to do is create a safety net that will be in place until next summer for Canadian businesses, for Canadian households. And at this point, it is a pretty robust safety net. If you take the wage mm -hmm. subsidy, which we've increased now to a maximum of 75%, the rent subsidy, which is 65%, but has an additional 25% lockdown top up, and rent subsidy businesses are getting, the first businesses who applied are getting their money this week. You mentioned the SEBA, Amanda, and thank you uh, for underscoring that. Uh, people, call up your banks now. The SEBA top-up is available. That's $20,000, $10,000 forgivable. So that is a pretty, uh, I think, robust safety net for businesses. But I'll never say never. And if we do spot holes in the programs, we'll do what we can to fix them. The other thing, which is so crucial, is we have light at the end of the tunnel. We know that vaccines are coming. 
And what we're trying to do is now create a bridge for Canadian businesses to that end point, which is now in sight. All right, I have two questions and not a ton of time. One is, um, you must be thinking about increasing revenue, uh, tax increases. Is the GST in your sights? What will you do to raise the money we need to right the balance here? I announced some new tax measures on Monday. Uh, the tax on internet services to level the playing field for Canadian and international providers of those. Uh, we also announced something that we campaigned on, which is a limit to the stock options deduction. And we made a very clear commitment that we are going to act if at the multilateral level at the OECD, we don't reach a consensus, Canada will act unilaterally by January of 2022 on taxing the large multinational companies that do a lot of business here in Canada. And we announced that we're going to work on a tax for non-resident owners of vacant properties. So there are some tax measures there. All right, I, I don't have time to press you on that issue, so it'll be our conversation for next time because I've got to let you go, but I need to ask you about the negotiations we understand are going on about uh, Meng Wanzhou, two Canadians, uh, obviously lives are, are in the balance here. What can you tell us about that? What do we know? Well, lives are in the balance, Amanda, and this is an issue that's before the courts, so I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to comment today. But I do want to say to the families of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, you are foremost in our thoughts, in the thoughts of the government, and I think in the thoughts of all Canadians. Christian Freeland, we appreciate your time today. Okay, thanks a lot, Amanda, and thank you for picking up on the preloaded stimulus. I love that report. <laughs> Christian. Christian Freeland is our, uh, obviously, Deputy Prime Minister and our Finance Minister. Thank you.